Ben. Hi. You've been here the whole time. Everybody else, how many folks have been here this whole time? Almost. 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 All right. Okay. All right. Four, 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 four. Is that oh, is that right? Is it like school? You're not brave enough to sit in the front row at the beginning? No, there's no seats. Oh. 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 Well, welcome. Finally. Okay. Finally here. You've heard me say this then. Is everybody having a good time? You can get it right the first time. Yeah. All right. You know. All right. Okay. Hey. Uh, if you've got questions, we've got to figure it out. We've got an interesting mic situation here, but maybe we'll be able to work something out here. Of course. So we'll hopefully be able to get to those. Okay, so hey, let me bring out our guests because they're, they're, they're not even hiding. They're standing right over there. Individually, our guests today have voiced a number of popular characters. You know that, including at least two very different anthropomorphic animals. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe there's a mashup where, you know, that's yet to come here. Uh, and not only can you perf see them perform in many of the same titles, of course, like Beast Stars, but they also happen to be good friends in real life. Please welcome to the stage Jonah Scott and Kelton Goff. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me back. You're going to take me later tonight. He liked it so much, he has to go back a second time. Yeah, that's good. That's good. 
He got a small three-way. He's gonna get a regular five-way now. <laughs> so, want to introduce yourself for people who might yeah. not Sure. Uh, my name is Jonas Scott. I'm a voice actor for video games, anime, commercials, cartoons, that kind of thing. Uh, you may know me as Lego She and Beast Wars. Uh, <laughs> So here's a scenario. Ready? Aww. Hey, I'm hungry. Let's get something to eat. Which one of you is more likely to hold up the decision making of the food process? Uh, maybe me. Yeah. I mean, if we're in LA, Kellen knows the hot spots. He was raised in, in that area. But uh, if we're in Cincinnati, I'm dragging his butt everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, not really either of us. Usually we're pretty. We're, we're very chill. Yeah, we're very yeah. we, we have a friend group where there are a couple who are maybe a little less specific. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. there's got some dietary restrictions, but yeah. I'll eat anything, uh, pretty much anything once. <laughs> At least once. I don't like it. Yeah. Not too picky. Yeah. How did I went you to get culinary school, so I, oh. I know how to cook a lot. And oh. Oh, I know that. Did you not know that? Yeah. <laughs> for a year, yeah. yeah. I, went, I went to UC culinary school. Oh. Um, yeah. so I, I, so, I so wish we now had planned a newlywed type game where each asked you each questions about the other secretly. <laughs> that would have taken more and more setup time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's like, it's like, what training has Jonah done recently that I've never seen? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> if Gordon Ramsay came in here right now, yeah. <laughs> who would win? Who would win the fight? You or Gordon Ramsay? Probably Gordon Ramsay. He's shredded. He's surprising himself for someone who cooks so much. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, I, I guess there are some people who have watched those yes. streams. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I, today, I actually signed one of the uh, sure, shirts. shirts. Yeah. Yes, that was me. Cliff Chapin, uh, who voices Bakugo, uh, was in one of the was one of the, in one of the original games, and he made this shirt. Um, or it, he made up this phrase, but I'm pretty sure it was his shirt. Um, and it was like. I think it was Bakugo with, and, and his favorite catchphrase under that alert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he also drew, I, I, one of my favorite shirts is drawn by <laughs> Chapin from a Jack Boxer, but it is a very poorly drawn Bakugo, and like screaming, and underneath it says, how do I be voice actor? <laughs> and I'm like, one of these days I'm going to need to sign that clip. You know, what, cringe. you know what's cool about that initial stream, though, was uh, that very line. Um, Alarnia. Uh, Alarnia. Alarnia. We, we, uh, because we all laughed so hard at that, um, at the time we were making, uh, we were dubbing an anime called Locking Dog and Drop. And um, yeah. we snuck it in there. We snuck that alert. Yeah. There's a lot of Easter eggs. Natalie Morris as a robot says that in the first episode. She's so, a writer. You guys know where that came from. Yeah. Well, it is Chip. <laughs> There's all kinds of Easter eggs in Locking Dog and Drive. Watch Locking Dog and Drive. It's yeah. great. Lock Dog and Drive. Yes. So Jonah, I've once seen you talk about how you, one of the ways you got to voice acting was because mm -hmm. of your, how much you loathed stage acting. Yeah. Um, and in particular, you talked about how the audition process is just hard, just miserable, you know, soul, soul wrenching. Yeah, uh, I went to, so I went to Western Kentucky University for, for college. Uh, musical theater program, uh, it was great. But, oh, well, 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 uh, but the process at school is fine. When you're learning how to do this stuff, it's it's very, they hold your hand a lot. There's a lot of, like, this is how you do it, here's your juries, this is, you gotta learn these three monologues, and here's what you have to know by the time you graduate, and X, Y, Z. It was getting to be the time to graduate, and I was also on the college esports team. I played semi-professional League of Legends, and I, I was an Andy Carey man. Um, <laughs> I was I was the guy shooting. Um, so uh, I realized that doing video games, uh, playing video games as a job takes a lot of time. It's like a sport. You gotta go and scream with your teammates. You gotta go and uh, do flashcards. What what ability does this? What ability does this? Which ability does you gotta learn? And you gotta commit that stuff to memory. It takes a lot of time. If you were in theater, so is rehearsal. Rehearsal takes a lot of time. Tech week is an entire week where you're just might as well set up a cop. Like, you, you, you're gonna be eat, sleep, breathe, uh, that show for an entire week and a half, two weeks maybe. Um, and then I had to make the choice of like, do I want to spend my time doing this? Do I want to spend my time doing this? I didn't see my professional esports career going anywhere. I'm still, I'm still pretty good at video games, but it's, uh, I, I decided to take a trip to New York City for two weeks with a friend of mine, and I crashed on his uh, couch in New York City, and I got to sit in, very, very, very good to do this, but I got to sit in on Broadway auditions. Um, I got to sit in, waiting in the back of the house, and nobody really knew who I was, and I sneaked into a couple. Um, but I watched as these people got torn apart. Um, it could be down to the color shoes you wore. It could be down to how you held yourself during the monologue because there are thousands of actors in New York City and they're gonna find the one that works. Um, and you know, you, in New York City, I, we, had a, we were talking about this in the group chat the other day, New York City actors thrive on rejection. LA actors thrive on living in squalor. Uh, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta pick one. But I, 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 I had a ball. Yeah, sometimes, you know, being actors generally, uh, you know, roughing it sometimes. You um, gotta be an expert at recycling, turning bad vibes into good. Yeah, yeah. You gotta see the best in the, the, the terrible situations. And when I was watching those auditions, I thought to myself, I am not the kind of person that thrives on this rejection. I would go home in my bed and cry. I would do that. I would go and be like, nobody likes me. Uh, um, so I didn't know what to do. I stage just wasn't wanting me. And I knew exactly what to do after I started working online for a little bit. I started making more money than I did at Kramer's Deli. Um, and I eventually told my dad, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and move to Los Angeles and be a voice actor. And he's like, as long as it makes you more money than you're making now. <laughs> and I didn't know if it would. 
I, I crashed on my buddy's couch because of Jalen Cassell. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a writer for anime. He's a very, very good voice actor. He's. Okay, awesome. Yes. He's okay, yes. He's so good. Um, but I slept on his couch for a year, and he taught me how to love anime. Uh, taught me how to write anime. Don't really write too much anime. But, and I mean, here we are. It's like, that was like a year and a half, two years ago. So, and now yeah. We're up here. I wouldn't say that I hate stage acting. I'll still do it. It's just the I needed to figure out where I was gonna put my time. Uh, video games, acting. What kind of acting? What were you gonna do? So I had to reassess a little bit in junior, senior year of college. But yeah, I, I think I um, I'm doing better as a voice actor than I probably would as a stage actor. Yeah. Now. And the rejecting. You're probably not booking every job you get, though, right? So is there oh, still no. a level of... Oh, no. But there... I pulled up my statistics the other day. It's like, I book one in every 320 auditions, something like that. But the best part about being a voice actor is that you don't have to walk out of the theater knowing you didn't do it. You don't have to walk home with the Charlie Brown music in the background. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, if you, you don't get an email. That's your rejection. And then by that time, you forgot about it. And I, I delete the email after I do the audition. Boop, gone. Forgot. Out of my memory. Unless it's something that unless it's something I really want. And then I can't wait. I I I play away. I wait. I still fire to a thing. What could be? I open the window, just gonna let everything fit. I just stay. And watch. And Ke yeah. Ke Kellen, your uh, work uh, obviously you're doing voice acting in, in anime, but before that you were really? interested in... Is, you're Kellen, with a mask on, I'm not sure. You're Kellen Goff, right? I, I just wandered on stage. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Security. But you were interested in animation I before that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you were first interested in animation, right? And then, yeah, yeah before that. I did uh, flash animation on uh, newgrounds.com. Woo! Uh, yeah. I was an itty-bitty and I knew like Kelly but uh, I, I, I always liked uh, contributing to other worlds. And maybe one day I'll go and create my own world again. But right now I'm just sort of absorbing what I can from other geniuses' worlds while I can. And uh, everybody always came to me for the acting part because I, I did musical theater in <laughs> high school and, and uh, in Brooklyn, so. Um, and, uh, it, it just sort of evolved and evolved and evolved and it's like, I get, whoa, I like this. I like doing mm. this. I want this. Um, and then I wrote Fun Time Freddy and the rest of the history. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, at what point do you realize, you know, it, what surprise, look, well, there's a wide range of characters, you know these guys, there's a wide range of characters these guys play. At what point do you realize that you can do these, I, 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 Singling out Kellen, because we're talking about Kellen here. Characters that sound nothing like you at all. I mean, well, you, good at that. you yeah. must listen back and think it doesn't. You have no connection to that character because it's not you, right? I mean, how did you uh, f discover these characters in there? Where I don't know. Um, I mean, I have autism, and the way that I sort of utilized it, I suppose, uh, to cure the boredom was. Uh, uh, copying what I heard, and from there just mixing and matching the different lists and uh, and tonalities and, and all that into uh, different stuff. And I didn't really think about uh, you know it, it what if it sounds too much like me. I just sort of reached for it. <laughs> it's hard to describe it any other way, but uh, uh, well, practice makes perfect. It does. <laughs> it's interesting, like just, you know, you've seen impressionists who do voices where as soon as they snap into a, some of their impersonating, their demeanor changes, their eyes change. I mean, even now as you guys do these voices, it's just, it's a whole shift that happens instantaneously. It's not a voice. Uh, the voice is the frosting, the character is the cake. Um, they're, they're snapping into another character. They're eating another piece of cake. Um, when you create a character, the voice should come naturally. If you create a character from the voice up, then you're already doing it wrong because you wouldn't put frosting into the baking pan. <laughs> right? I've been known to. <laughs> I've been known to. He went to culinary school. Yeah, 
Okay, maybe I shouldn't talk about baking next to Ramsey over here. Yeah. Um, all the same, that's generally not the way it's done. So when you create a character, you can get so into it that you just turn into somebody else. And that's when you know that you're psychotic, <laughs> but you're good at your job. Compartmentalization. <laughs> yes. You might have switched it off. You can project your theater major all day. But my voice, I got work on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And Joshua, I'm singling you out. Welcome to your first panel. Welcome Woo! To your first panel. Woo! Another local one day Woo! good. So you mentioned you're going, you're going to Miami. You mentioned you're going to Miami for nursing, you said, right? Yes, yeah. What are you doing here doing voices then? What? <laughs> How did you? What is the what is the Venn diagram? Oh, the Venn diagram. That, uh, of how this all happened. Yeah. Really happened? Well, you voice acting as a whole has changed so much, especially during the pandemic. Yeah. That it's opened up so many new avenues for people like me who have lived in. Ohio. I think that's me. I'm sorry. Oops, sorry. Who lived in Ohio <laughs> at, for their entire lives and just like wanted to do stuff like this forever now. To be able to reach out there into the places that weren't able to be reached out to before and put their auditions out there, find places to audition for anime and stuff like this, it's incredibly important to find like those places through places like Twitter, there's smaller sites where you can work up through fan projects that I use, Skype, Casting Hall Club, yeah, Voice Acting Club. Oh, voice Acting Club Discord. Yeah, represent. Yeah. And I've been doing that as I've been doing my nursing work, just like off and on, like homework, go to audition, homework, go to audition. It's, it's tough, but it's something that I love to do. And it's open. I, I was able to record all of Sasuke and Dino from my college dorm room. Wow. Wow. Crazy, right? Yeah, I recorded Attack on Titan in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild out there, guys. Everything's different now. It's Everything's crazy. crazy. made so much stuff go to online, so much stuff able to open to remote actors. And I've been here for so long, and I'm going to have to be here for a little longer to finish up my nursing major. And hopefully I'll get out somewhere in the words of it. Look out, world. Look out. Okay, so. Joshua Waters is coming in high. Woo! Yeah. No, you are sincerely very yeah, you are sincerely very talented. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and I know a thing. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. This yeah. so I, I, I don't imagine your ambitions are to be like, uh, what was it, that Robin Williams movie where he's a doctor who's like, dresses like a clown? Patch Adams? Patch Adams? Good move. I don't imagine that's your ambition. So if you if you have the opportunity, there's a fork in the road here, voice acting, nursing, are you going to try to pursue both? Or does one I'm, override the other? I'm going to try my best to pursue both as much as I can. Okay, Woo! good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm early in the game right now, and I'm, I'm very passionate about both things. My mother was also a nurse for a very long time, oh, so she's up in shadow and go and see the whole world that I've been doing stuff. Yeah, go. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I'm a voice actor, because I know how to handle mics. <laughs> <laughs> Not even uh, 21 yet, by the way. Yeah, I'm 20 years old. And already doing this stuff. That's a testament to your talent. You're going to be big. I, I think so. Thank you yeah. so much. It truly really is the absolute world. These guys have been absolute gems to be around. Like, they go on. <laughs> I'll say it to the mic. They've been really nice to me. <laughs> They're, they're absolutely great. I Being able to meet up with people like this, especially, like, earlier on in the game has helped out immensely with confidence, with going forward as a voice actor. It's been amazing. You know, you, you make me think, uh, you guys have only, you, look, you're, you're fairly new to the game uh, and grew up in this era where this technology makes, democratized so many jobs, including voice acting. So you may not feel this, but I wonder if it, you, it, you want to compete, competing now against anybody around the world. In a sense, it's maybe it becomes more challenging. Right? Like to get the, the to get the, the world yeah. to new people. Yeah, um, we can bring up Akadama Drive again. Uh, that dub is 
we coined the term tri-coastal. There is there are people from New York City, there are people from uh, Texas, and there are people from LA in Akudama Drive. It is an incredibly diverse cast. Yeah, but even more states than that. Um, it's really diverse. We we got a, a bunch of really cool people in, and the same goes for oops, Skimiano and, and a bunch of other uh, dubs that were produced during that during the COVID COVID era. Um, they're so diverse and it gave a lot of people an incredible amount, including myself. Uh, I wouldn't be in any Crunchyroll shows at all if it wasn't for the ability to record from my house. Um, and it's a lot of trust uh, that people put in you when they're like, you can take care of this, right? You're gonna sound good, right? It's not like anybody's gonna make fun of the show or anything, right? So uh, it's a lot of trust. So I thank the producers and everybody that let that happen and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Kellen, I have a question for you. You don't know, I really wish that, okay, anyway, we'll do, it, we'll do it a bit this way. I have a question for you about Jonah. Oh God, uh, okay, answer right. What is Jonah's favorite Beastie Boys track? Oh dude, you gotta know this. You <laughs> never about this. It's one of my favorite bands. You probably heard it, maybe you've heard it play. I told you, in Akuyama Drive, I really wanted to hear it. Yes! Yeah. Oh, he got it! Yes! Oh, it was so good. I wish we had a prize for you. <laughs> we don't, we don't. Your prize is my love. <laughs> what are you guys' processes for finding voices? Uh, All my characters sound the same. Okay. So, Keeps it simple. I, just to get the room to, I wake up, roll out of bed, and it's like, what are we doing? Oh, okay. You gotta sound cool. Got it. Okay. It's better. Does anyone here know the ink tank by chance? No? Okay, one person. So, you, you, you sound different in, uh, in our comic world than that. What, what I like, like to think is, you're right, um, uh, it's subtle differences. What I like to think that I personally bring to anime dubs and, and in productions is a sort of like cinematic groundedness. Uh, it's this like real, um, constant uh, reality that I'm trying to impart on these characters. So. In my own head, I don't have these crazy different, like Kellen, like Fiddlesticks sounds nothing like, you know, his other characters, right? Barely any words. Um, but uh, I like to think that my characters have tiny, subtle differences. So I occupy the same vocal range for Joe and Legoshi, but those are two completely different personalities. Um, I occupy the same vocal range for uh, Tatsu and, you know, Billy Tiber, but those are two completely different personalities. Um, also, when you yell as a voice actor, you got one voice. Uh, there, you can't really change your yell. <laughs> you can't really change. Yellow is not my natural yell. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, but like when you're doing combat chatter or something, like great, enemy left, enemy right, all those sound the same when you're as your character, so they or as your personality, so they have to get other bodies in. But um, I think when I go into the booth, I, I try and break down the nuances and, and the tiny little emotional shifts and uh, the little itty bitty inflections that you can change in reads just to give a different emotional response. Um, so, yeah. Is it, your, question. is it your stage training that helps you? I, I would like to think so, yeah. Gosh, there's a gremlin somewhere yeah, that like, has another mic and it's like, I got it. Yeah. 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 I'd like to think so. Uh, a lot of the stage stuff that I used to do, it, like if you're on stage, is very projected. You have to, you know, scream to the person in the back. Maybe you'll get a mic. Depends on the acoustics of the, uh, the house. Um, but I think what really did it is watching other people do what I do. Um, I would play video games and I would sit down and analyze that. When I was playing League of Legends, I would mock the heroes as I was playing. I would mock the heroes that I played. I would. Play Repeat Garen and Jace and Jarvin, a bunch of like, those those people that occupy my voice range, and I would <laughs> the, the guy that's on comms would always be like, You should be a voice actor, bro. You sound exactly like them. And I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Like <laughs> at that time I'm just like, I'm just making fun of these guys. Like, but looking back, it's what you pick up from people. Um, who was it? Was it Crispin that says like stealing is art or something like that? Which I don't wholeheartedly subscribe to, but um, you 
learn by watching others. Like I learned a lot by what I was very proud of my creature voice that I got cast as for the first time and I showed Kellen and I'm like, look dude, look at this thing that I made. Aren't you proud of me? I was very proud of you. You, you utilized stuff that you hadn't before. A lot of phlegm. <laughs> yeah, the glottis is a magical instrument. <laughs> Kellen, how do you find a voice? Weesh. Uh, like I said, character building. Come in. Is it this thing? Is it this thing? Let me see. No? It's the grandma. He's up there. It's the, it's the demons. They come in. They finally come to the now. Oh, no. oh, wait, I think I figured it out. Is it being near this? No. I create characters because I made a deal with the devil. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. Um, no, it's just, I mean, picture references help. Yeah. It's just if they're, you know, happier and they're more But, uh, it, and, you know, other stuff like that. It's weird. The, the, the character creating process is like something that would be all, uh, here all day talking about. Yeah, it's but okay. it's up to interpretation pretty much. And I uh, honestly just try to do whatever I feel nobody else is doing, but would still be a, a viable choice. Um, something uh, maybe brings a little bit of humor to it, you know. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have to. If, it, if it's like a set thing, it's like, okay, I'll just do my version of that. That's because that's the best I can do. I can't like full on like impersonate the same whatever. I, I just want to, you know, do it justice in, in the best way that I can. Um, so, yeah. Is it true the first time you did uh, Freddy, you didn't know you were doing Freddy? Uh, yes, that is true. Um, Who did you think you were doing? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I knew it was for Scott Cawthon, but uh, all it said was costumed entertainer on the uh, side. Yeah, and, and the, the side said someone that kids love, but adults would be hesitant to leave the kids alone. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave it a couple tries, and I think I came up with something okay. But I can't tell you how I created that one. I, I was running on three hours of sleep at that time. Uh, it was the demons. The demons. Uh, the demons did it for me. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's how you create a character. Yeah, that's my point. I think about it. Find a devil. Um, what about you? Um, I've actually spent a lot of time taking much of the online voice acting classes. Ah. Uh, I took one in particular through uh, Richard Corbett's yes. that I it's absolutely subscribe to. That is he an helped. incredible he class. Helped. It's, he talks a lot about very specific things in finding characters, and he talked about reading through literally every single bit of the character side that you receive. Like, they send you, when you get these sides, it's like, not just the lines and a picture of the character, so they send you like a description of the character, or descriptions of the scene. Sometimes so, it gets a little gross. I like that you're holding the mic with a pinky up. <laughs> 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 but the little things you have to notice to create this character. Yeah, this is about <laughs> the character creation process. Yes. <laughs> but it's it's all about like you take in every single bit of information that you get from the character side that you receive. And that could be barely anything. Mm -hmm. But you have these little snippets of things you can find, like why they're acting a certain way in line one compared to line two. Finding the through line through everything and trying to make it seem through the audition as much as you can make it. That's how I usually There's also a lot of filters too, because once you get cast and they bring you in, then you when you spend ten minutes with the director and you know maybe a producer or something fine-tuning a lot of that stuff. And the character will generally be the same coming out the other end, but there are there's a little minutia that, that change that are some yeah, it's a refined version. Um, to hit the final product, and then they take a take, and then they keep editing, and then like, you know, by the time you hear everything, it's gone through nine to ten different people's rubber stamps, yeah. and uh, sometimes it comes out, and you're like, oh, I can't believe they took that take, or sometimes it comes out, and it's like, they pulled that out of me? Yeah. Like, whoa, <laughs> that sounds pretty good. You guys have questions for the, guy, for the gentleman here?
emotional scene you guys have recorded so far? Um, probably uh, there, there are a few in Sasaki that are just like, heart-wrenching because uh, he's, he just loves this boy so much and it's like I don't want to ruin this and I'm like trying my best to hold the love back, you know? So I had to go to some places for that. But I think the most emotional was probably the scream at the end of Overhaul's arc. Yeah. Um, no. Cause that was the buildup of all the frustration uh, throughout. Uh, it, and I, I had to go to a pretty dark place for that one. So I'll give that one. Okay, that's a good answer. There's a fight in season two of Beastars uh, that is pretty raw. <laughs> uh, it is the hardest I've ever screamed, period, and, and full stop. And uh, I would t say that's the like most intense emotion, but uh, I would say the most like recovery that I've had to do for anything would be in Dying Light 2. Um, Aiden is a lot of meat. Uh, when they were writing the game, uh, I didn't know this at the time, when I, when I was doing temp work, but they were writing the character around me. Like, they would take my headshot and make it look like me. They uh, were writing, the English localization guy was writing like the colloquializations around how I would speak. When we get into the booth, they're like, how would you say this? How would this come out of your mouth? What is good for you? Um, but because of that, near the end, it was very close to me. The whole, his character arc, the entirety of his character, um, he's got this kind of like Nightwing, like young madman vibe. Um, and he, near the end, has an incredible, like, you know, the, it's the enemy law of the entire game. And he has a MacGuffin, right? I'm not going to spoil too much, but he has a MacGuffin. And the MacGuffin, he's been chasing this thing the entire game. And then the MacGuffin just goes away. And he has to, he's like, oh my god, my entire world has been torn inside out. And it's this, this guy who's like guarded and close and he never really tells anybody anything. He's like a cowboy or you know, a lone wanderer or something like this. And suddenly he has this incredibly emotional outpouring like catharsis in front of like the bad guy and like in front of the person he's been looking for. And it's it's intense. And that I I called me that I called my agent immediately after that session of like I'm not working tomorrow. I this I, I need to I need to be with my emotions for a bit. And he's like, well, sure, that's fine. I didn't have anything scheduled, so I was just making sure. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the most intense play I've played to it. Uh, I think the one for me, I have doubled down on Sasuke and Mio as well, because there was a legitimate scene in the middle of it where Mio has to come to terms with his feelings about Sasuke and the honest to the staircase one mm -hmm. made me legitimately cry while we were recording it after we were finished. Did it really? Well, yeah, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, but it was, it, was, it was such an important scene that we ran through and took a lot of time. The director for that show. You can say your name. Yeah, Emily Fajardo. Shout out to Emily Fajardo. Bless, yeah. bless our mom. Bless our gay mom. The, 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 every day. Queen of the gays. <laughs> yeah. she, she, we took so much time for that specific scene to go through it repeatedly and chat about how I would feel, how the reactions are for me and uh, what he's realizing specifically in this scene. And it, it just like hit me so hard as someone who's also had to go through that same realization process myself. It, it was it was a lot for me, and I'm so glad that we were It also speaks to authentic casting. I want to take a second to say that, uh, because there are a lot more, you know, gay-centric uh, media uh, coming out on more shows, you know, there's games and things like that. I mean, Buzz Lightyear recently had that, you know, there's a, there's a uh, same-sex kiss. Um, 
and accurate casting, uh, authentic casting is pivotal to that because without that you wouldn't get a wonderful performance like Josh, you wouldn't because the person just wouldn't have that emotional recall there. Connection that someone has with that character. Yep. Thank, right, thank you. Thank you for the question. You're welcome. So, thank you. Just to start off, to say something to Josh, uh, I'm uh, a nurse for the last 10 years. Uh, so you picked a great field to be in uh, for flexibility. Uh, you know, the different places you can go with nursing. Uh, I've done travel nursing, so you can get to other places. It's, it's a great way to get out and about. You can do per diem where you work your schedule, you make your schedule so you can work around. I know the studio, the recording is probably much more time sensitive. Uh, nursing will work with you, so that's a great field for you. And the fact that you still want to do that after observing a pandemic says a lot about you. So it's been something that I've been looking through and looking at the opportunities afterwards a lot. And it's been, it's been open, eye opening my question for you guys though is uh i always ask all the heroes i've never met one of the villains yet so um but i always ask all the my academia heroes who their favorite villain is we know who you guys' favorite villain is <laughs> who's your guys' favorite hero favorite hero from any show? Uh, from my hero? From my hero. hero. Ah. Um, I mean, I, I love Chargeful. I love me some Kaminari. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. He's a hero by now. He's got his license, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. this uh, comic dub for uh, five years later, which is a, 
uh, comic about uh, what happens to Ben 10 and Danny Phantom after the series is done, and it's a uh, world's collide kind of deal. Um, no, by the end of the like Yeah. I'm a fan fiction writer, so, I'm so there you go. <laughs> so uh, I've been doing those, and I've directed a couple loop groups, but I don't know. It, I, at this point, I'm just trying to find what fits best, and as much as I do like doing it, there are a lot of parts of it that uh, I, make me very anxious. So I like the casting part of it. I just I don't like telling people what to do. I, I, I like it when people do what they want to do, because usually they have better ideas than they do. So it is. So may, maybe here and there, but not actively pursuing. I'm still incredibly weird. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, I've thought about direction before, but I feel like I need to spend a bit more time in the voice scene and learn a bit more, shadow people, and figure things out before I would even like consider direction. But it, it's been on the mind, trust me. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Do a kickflip! So Do a kickflip! Over there. Do a flip! <laughs> so, yes. are you guys comfortable with doing like your voice impressions of your characters? Sure. Hello. Okay. So I have some weird requests. <laughs> I, um, Jonah, I would like Joe to explain to Mia why bullying grade school kids is wrong. Okay. And then after that, <laughs> I would like I haven't seen Sasaki and Miano. Um, I don't even know if I pronounced that right. Um, I would like Kellen to, so basically what's happening is Gregory is lost. <laughs> and, uh, and is he also <laughs> sus? <laughs> no. Just that one word has ruined a generation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Gregory's lost and, and Freddy has found him on the top beam oh, <laughs> in the arcade. Okay. And I and I want his frantic reaction, please. And this is happening while they're <laughs> explaining. Um. No, I'm I'm gonna go read one at a time. Yeah, oh, one at a time. Okay. And then what does Mia do? I haven't seen Sasaki and Miyano. Okay. Mia me, me freaks out. I see. Did you walla? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you didn't judge him. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mia. So. Uh, I hear from school that you have been engaging in some, uh, uh, I hate to use this word, bullying. Um, it's not cool. I was told to sit down and have this conversation with you. And you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, but here's the reason, okay? You don't want to pick on kids. I don't think I picked on anybody else. Because, let me because. When you grow up, you you are probably gonna date him at some point. So <laughs> you gotta be nice. And if you're not nice, you're not. Look, we're gonna discuss this further when you're like 17. I'll. I'll you just like, Joe, you, yeah. you sound a lot like Lucas Sawada. Oh, no, no, no. Are you the same guy? Hey. Hey. Back off. Okay. <laughs> Mia, he's better looking than I am. We're still dating, right? Yeah, I think we're still dating. Okay, cool. <laughs> Greg Gregory, why are you up there? How did you get up there? Get down from there! Okay, you got down. <laughs>
Thank you, John Chuck Slide. <laughs> Are there any voice actors you look up to in the present moment? Is it big names like Dee Bradley Baker? Or are you guys more so kind of like looking up to each other and encouraging yourselves? And then, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, a little bit. And then secondly, uh, what does the usual day of work look like in terms of setup, recording, teardown at home versus like commuting to the studio? And then Josh, of course, like managing school and finals and everything. <laughs> okay, so to answer your first question, I, I answer this a lot and it's generally the same. Um, the person that I look up to the most as a voice actor is Matthew Mercer. Um, he has he's informed a lot of my moral decisions. He is literally what I believe. I believe he's an angel. I believe he is like he he is one of the nicest men on the planet. I've never met him, uh, but I have heard many many stories, and it has always been a positive experience. Um, one of these days, I'm going to meet him, and all of the speeches that I have rehearsed in the shower are going to go out the window. <laughs> And I'm gonna just be like, oh, man. but yeah, uh, Matthew Mercer. Um, he's informed a lot of my character things and like uh, stuff like that. But um, I also look up to people like Helen and my friends. Like I was talking earlier, I did a creature voice and I sent it to him. I'm like, hey man, what do you think? Yeah, right? Okay, I'm gonna send it. All right, I'm gonna send it. Um, I also, you know, look up to uh, you know the directors and other other producers, uh, people that are doing like the really hard work. Um, they are, you know, MVP most of the time. Especially if, you know, they like you and like working with you, you can, you know, can I do that again? Can I do that take again? I got a better read in me. They'll let you work really hard on, on the work that you love. Um, yeah, it's that way with uh, Prince of Tennis and Howard. Howard loves Prince of Tennis. He's the director, so we were able to, no, we can sit, we have like two hours, but we can sit down and we can actually hash this out. I know we're going to get done in 90 minutes, but we can take our time. Yeah. Dee Bradley Baker, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he was the one who started me on the creature path for sure. Just seeing what he could do. And uh, you know, I, I had prototypes of, uh, of what I'm able to do now when I was a kid. But he encouraged me to sort of grow them into, you know, ho hopefully do something like that someday. I think I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah. Him and Frank Welker, the oh, yeah. godfather of it all. Um, yeah, a bunch of amazing comedic actors. Charlie Adler. Oh, my Charlie Adler yeah. is so good. Yeah, Charlie is uh, a, the, 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 uh, the crabby old uncle of the video industry. <laughs> uh, he curses more than he says real world. Um, <laughs> hey, take a class, take a Charlie Adler class, and you are going to walk out. You'll, you'll, your ears. Yeah, you'll learn, you'll learn many things. <laughs> you words. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it just I try to gather something from everyone I hear because everybody has a different uh, lesson to give. Um, you, you just have to listen. I've been able to meet some incredible. Just two years. Just two years. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've been huge inspirations for me. I, I have to say them, Rich Corbis as well. Yes. I have my partner over there, Min. Uh, he's also a voice actor. And he's, he's absolutely helped me throughout everything that I've done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Jonah, I know you mentioned League, right? Oh, I yeah. wanted to just ask if you had a main. I don't know if you did too, like played League, Kellen. Well, but League, you're in League. I I, I tried to teach him League. Oh yeah. He, they they want to teach me League. <laughs> I, I all I want to do is jungle though. Yeah, that's why it's taking so long. Yeah. When I was professional, I would eighty carry main, sub top, and then sub sub jungle. Uh, I would never play mid. I was just not good back then. Uh, I couldn't get the grasp of those those, those casters. But um, when I was playing AD Carry, my uh, climb character was Ezreal. Back, back when there was blue build Ezreal, everything burned, everything hurt, slowed you down. He was a little lost, but just kept following you. 
Um, played Graves. I actually was uh, one of top two my own horn. I was one of the best Graves uh, in the region, but that was just because nobody was playing Graves, and I tried to get as good as I could with him. Uh, Corky, obviously, I would play many, many other uh, AD carries, but those are my mains. Um, top was Jarvan. Uh, I played uh, up until like Alawi came out, so I would play Alawi top and BMS. Um, Jarvan, I just have that Garen. Uh, I played Maokai top if we needed a tank. It's kind of bad, and you kind of gotta just camp the tower, but uh, hey, if you need a tank, it works. You can get an AD mid or something like that. But yeah, I, I had several mids. Uh, I love how you left League to follow something practical. <laughs> uh, we've got time for maybe one or two more questions, okay, okay. and then we got to wrap up. Lightning round, let's go. Hey, Kellen, I was wondering if you could ask Vanessa to come to Tilted Towers and hit the gritty. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Don't film this. <laughs> Don't film this. <laughs> oh, Vanessa, can you come to Tilted Towers? We can jump jump. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my question for all of you is, what has been the hardest line to record? Maybe something that you had to say over and over in the booth before you got it perfect. Oh, I hate there's every a lot other of, one. There's, <laughs> a lot of, there's a lot of the word Ouroboros in anime everywhere. I don't know why. Ouroboros is so hard to say if you're doing like a fast character voice. I hate when uh, three consonants are put oh, together. Yeah. S T S S K S. You can go quick as off. <laughs> so tired of it. Because it, it, you're trying to say it fast and it's like, oh, have you seen the columnist today? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm afraid we're going to have to wrap up there. Uh, thank you so oh, much. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, no. 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 Hey, thank you so much to John and Kelly and John Lamar. And uh, if you want to ask us uh, the questions that were burning out, which you couldn't, uh, we're going to be in the celebrity room right down that way. And Josh uh, will be there too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Hey, guys. I want to go pee for